we we'll get started so we would like to welcome dr sanjay kalra from karnal uh, who is uh, going to talk to us on diabetes management the diabetes management has changed so much and uh, dr sanjay always talks about this concept of changing from triad to hexad and that's what we're going to hear today from dr sanjay kalra from karnal uh, the tamil nadu rsd is a very active Uh, branch state chapter of RSDA. RSDA, as you know, is the largest organization of diabetes healthcare professionals in Asia. And we are. This is the first online education program we are starting. And we thought uh, we can't have a better speaker than Dr. Sanjay Kalra, talking on a shift in the management of diabetes from prior to itself. So he is going to talk to us on what it is. And I would ask our uh, secretary. Honorary Secretary Dr. Murli Dharan from Dindakal to welcome on everybody. Yeah. Um, good evening, Vijay sir. Uh, good evening, friends. On behalf of RSSC Tamil Nadu chapter, it is our pleasure to welcome all the delegates. Um, uh, Dr. Vijay Vishwanathan has taken the charge of chairmanship 20 days back. This is our first online meeting. it is our pleasure to welcome all of you for this online meeting and dr sanjay kalra uh, he is uh, very very passionate in teaching the doctors as well as the patients his education series are um, very very popular among the doctors and during the covid time he did lot of meetings and his uh, diabetes essentials program is wonderful uh, take away by all the doctors today it is my pleasure to welcome all the delegates for this wonderful meet this is a first online meeting by our chapter um it is over to you sir sanjay sir before uh, mudli you ask sanjay to talk i think it's my privilege to introduce dr sanjay kalra who is the past president of the endocrine society of india he is editor of editor chief of the endocrine society of india textbook of endocrinology He has established the Bharati Hospital in Karnal, and he is a president of the South Asian Federation of Endocrine Societies, and also the president of the Indian Professional Association for Transgender Health, and he is a chairperson of the Education Working Group of the International Society of Endocrinology. So on to you, Sanjay. Thank you, sir, and warm greetings to everybody. Uh, for me it's a great pleasure and also great pride to be able to meet old friends and to make new friends as well and to be able to share some insights with uh, our colleagues from tamil nadu now uh, from the rest of india when we look at tamil nadu we look at tamil nadu as the diabetes care capital of the country and as the diabetes awareness capital of the country few of us will know that this uh, aspect of google trends is uh, very welcome you can just go and type in google trends you go to google trends and then you can explore whatever you want to explore how much of interest is going on in on maybe katrina kaif or ashwarya rai today or maybe how much of interest on any particular movie any particular disease and you will see what is happening across the world across south asia across india when you go to google trends you can also compare states with each other and cities with each other now look at this uh, slide in front of us i just uh, typed in diabetes and see the city which came out right on top amma petai next to thanjavur that doesn't mean that amma petai is uh, googling or is asking for the number of people in amma petai that are googling diabetes is more than that in chennai what it means is from a percentage point of view amma petai citizens are most likely to google for diabetes and just keep on going throughout the list this is something interesting you will find that it is all tamil nadu cities which come right on top so actually diabetes awareness is very high in the state of tamil nadu another thing which i realize is dr vijay will know and many of you will know i keep on speaking about person centered care patient centered care and i always thought this was a western concept because when you go to pubmed and you dial person centered care you will find that uh, there is significant uh, research on this field more than 12000 articles and all of them have uh, most of them have occurred in the past 5 or 6 years and the first article came in 1961 
but anybody who is a student of tamil literature classic tamil literature will laugh you and rightfully so they will say just go to kanyakumari and see the statue that uh, is uh, looking at you and blessing you that is the thirukuran and what is it that he taught us uh, sorry thiruvalluvar and what is it that thiruvalluvar taught us he gave us uh, this wisdom in the form of thirukuran and this uh, shloka 950 it says to all of us any treatment involves these four orders of course i now i know that it sounds much better in tamil but i apologize i am not able to speak i i also know the structure of uh, the thirukural each shloka each uh, verse will have four words in the first sentence and three in the second so it is very poetic but what uh, thiruvalluvar is telling us is any treatment to be effective needs four stakeholders the patient the doctor medicine and the nurse this is known as the quadruple of thiruvalluvar and now just think for a moment in our practice if we want successful therapeutic outcomes what do we need okay we are there but if i am sitting in an empty opd there is no patient then what kind of outcome will come no outcome so i need a patient also a person with diabetes if i am there in my opd and my patient has also come to meet me but i don't have any medicine to give him then again what is the outcome going to be it is going to be poor so i need to be able to offer non pharmacological and pharmacological therapy but we need people to help us whether it is the diabetes nurse the diabetes educator whether it is even simple physician assistant or receptionist in our opd who is explaining the medicine or the caregivers at home the spouse the parents the children everybody contributes to good therapeutic outcomes so do remember the quadruple of uh, thiruvalluvar the patient the doctor the medicine and the nurse and this is especially true for diabetes care uh, in thirukural there is another uh, stanza and here uh, thiruvalluvar reminds us that a doctor should have the measure of the patient see the word that he uses in tamil have the measure of the patient the disease and its state and then treat so what is he talking about is he talking about anthropometry measure the patient is he talking about uh, subjective aspects of patient characteristics measure the disease and its stage did he know so many years ago that today we will be checking glucose and hba1c and so many other tests because we have to measure the disease and its stage and did he know that only if we are able to measure the patient the disease and its stage only then can we treat he was right actually because now we need measures we need measures for thresholds what is the threshold for diagnosis what is the threshold for intervention a threshold for non pharmacological intervention a threshold for pharmacological intervention they may be different once you have decided to diagnose and intervene then what is your target for that also we need numbers sometimes the same number hba1c can work as a diagnostic tool it can also work as a threshold for intervention and as a treatment target not only that these measures that we are going to talk about they act as uh, hand holding tools they are tools for success they are like milestones in our journey towards good health and all this and more is mentioned in the thirukural but let's move on now let's move on to talking about why we manage diabetes in the clinic now there is this pyramid this is called maslow's pyramid actually so maslow was a behavioral scientist who told us that primary needs of everyone are roti kapda makan that is basic needs food clothing shelter once a human being has uh, got food clothing and shelter then he moves on to secondary needs which would be love and affection a sense of belonging and once you do that then you move on to tertiary needs which would be which would be like name and fame self esteem now if somebody doesn't have any food to eat at home somebody doesn't have uh, love and affection at home he is not going to think of you know fighting for maybe the post of president of rotary club in chennai so it comes stepwise only this is maslow's theory 
similarly we have a theory in uh, we have a theory in diabetes care and we all follow it sometimes our younger boys and girls miss this that is also our fault i will speak about that why it is our fault but let us look at this hierarchical model now the first thing that we need to ask our patient see remember what we are taught uh, measure the patient measure the disease and its stage the first thing that we need to ask our patient is how are you doing what are your symptoms what are your complaints and concerns are your complaints and concerns limited to diabetes alone or are they linked to comorbidities and complications so that is the first measure that we take in the clinic and then the first treatment is to manage that to correct that to give symptomatic well being only after we do this do we move on to glucometabolic optimization of course they will work hand in hand they will go together you have to ensure you glycemia you have to avoid hypoglycemia but supposing a patient comes to me and she says i am unhappy i have a headache i have a pain in my abdomen i have a pain in my foot i cannot argue with her and say madam i am a good doctor i am a good diabetologist see madam your hb1c is 6.3 and your fasting is 100 your pp is 140 she will say so what i am not bothered about those numbers i want you to fix my pain so the first step in this pyramid of good care is symptomatic well being followed by glucometabolic well being or glucometabolic optimization after we have achieved glucometabolic optimization only then do we begin to speak about vascular metabolic care macro vascular as well as micro vascular we have very good drugs available now expensive tablets expensive injections and i tell the patient sir see i am giving you the best medicine in the world it is guaranteed to reduce the risk of heart attack it is guaranteed to risk, uh, reduce the risk of death and then patient will laugh and say he will say young man uh, though i am not so young anymore but he will say i still have to get up at night to go to the bathroom in fact the medicine that you gave me now that has caused balanopostitis my glucose levels are all over the place i keep on getting hypoglycemia half the time that is my why my hb1c is normal i am unhappy and here you are talking to me about vascular metabolic health so see once again the bottom of the pyramid the base is symptomatic relief then glucometabolic relief and only if you have achieved these in the opd then we move on to vascular metabolic benefit both macro and micro vascular if we are able to achieve here then we will speak about other things as well barometabolic optimization means ensuring the optimal body weight ensuring the optimal fat percentage for a particular individual and then visceral metabolic if all this is done then we have the luxury to speak about liver health gonadal health uh, maybe obstructive sleep apnea sleep hygiene all these things now why i wanted to highlight this is this is part and parcel of what we do in the clinic every day of course we begin by greeting the patient then we take a history we ask them what is your chief complaint now many times in the opd there is no complaint patient will say i have come to you just for a routine check up or i have come to show my reports so now in modern medicine in chronic care medicine i think maybe we can change the word complaint to the phrase concerns and complaints if the patient's concern is an esr of 27 if the patient's concern is an hdl of 33 then we have to address that we cannot ignore it we have to acknowledge and address to the best of our ability so this is for symptoms complaints and concerns if the patient's concern is glucometabolic health good glucose numbers or good vascular metabolic health micro macro or barometabolic health that is optimization of body weight then let be let it be so that will come to the bottom of the pyramid but otherwise for a patient we have to follow this hierarchy and why have i raised it because when we read the modern guidelines nobody talks about symptoms at all until we ask how will we know someone might have symptoms of hyperglycemia per se polyuria polyphagia polydipsia but that is reducing now with time because we are doing a better job than 20 30 years ago but there will be so many people with other complaints until we ask how do we know whether the patient is snoring at night or not 
whether the patient is able to sleep well, whether the patient has a sexual dysfunction or not, whether the patient is taking uh, therapy from uh, alternative care professionals. So we have to ask all this and then we move ahead. Now, suddenly, uh, all of us will feel that uh, suddenly diabetes care has become so complicated. How do we manage it? So many things to do. But actually, it's not complicated at all. It's very easy. All we have to do is to understand how diabetes care has evolved over the past few decades. And then we evolve along with that. We also have to understand that as Indian doctors, we treat diabetes not only as a chronic disease, but also as an acute condition and as acute and chronic. So the same doctor, the same OPD, all of us in our clinics, one patient will come in, I have no complaints and concerns. Daksab, I just came to show you my report. So my A1C is 6.9. Thank you. The next one will come in with an acute complaint, maybe or subacute complaint, maybe frozen shoulder, pelanocostitis, painful neuropathy. And the third one will come in diabetic ketoacidosis. That is acute on acute. So we have to be able to change our thought process from patient to patient. Even within the same patient, we may have to change. So some patients, they will come in a very linear kind of a manner. So their attitude and our attitude also will be, okay, three months ago also, the A1C was normal, you take these medicines. Now also the A1C is normal, you take the same medicines. But many will come in a yo-yo kind of an approach. Yo-yo means they will come in with high glucose and maybe uh, left foot ulcer. So they will say, please fix me up. You give them insulin, you give them antibiotics, offloading, debridement, they are fine. They come to you for follow-up for two, three months, and then they are lost to follow-up. After two years, the gentleman will come again, and he will say, Ducks up, last time you fixed me, thank you so much. But now I have a new disease. So what is the new disease? When you fixed me up, I was fine. My sugar went away. I didn't even take any medicine. I didn't even get tested. But now I have got another ulcer. This is on the, instead of the right foot, it is on the left foot. So now it is a new disease. Please correct this for me. So this yo-yo approach is also there. Similarly, this kind of a yo-yo approach we have seen in our targets. And earlier, we used to have something called the glycemic triad. Uh, why was there a need to talk about glycemic triad? Now, in India, what I have learned from our seniors from Chennai, and Dr. Vijay Vishnathan is there. His son is uh, continuing the legacy laid down by his father. I have also learned from Professor P.K. Sahai, Sahai in Hyderabad. They had always been doing fasting and postprandial to monitor their patients. Do remember, fasting glucose is used for diagnosis as well as monitoring of diabetes. Postprandial glucose is used only for monitoring of diabetes. It is not a diagnostic. The method of diagnosing diabetes will be a challenge, glucose, not sugar also. So, of course, coming back to our topic from Professor Sahai, from Dr. Vijvishnasan, sir's father, we learned that fasting and postprandial must be done to monitor the patients. But our colleagues in USA were not doing that. They were checking only fasting glucose. And then they would get in trouble. HB1C became commonly available about uh, two, three decades ago. And then that was included to form the triad. And it was understood that all three aspects, A1C, fasting, and postprandial, have to be controlled in order to achieve optimal cardiovascular outcomes. All these three parameters independently are associated with adverse CV outcomes as well. But then uh, we figured out, people figured out that it is not just hyperglycemia, which is deleterious. Hypoglycemia can also be harmful and glycemic variability can be very harmful. Because when you have high levels of glycemic variability, that is again like that yo-yo phenomenon that impacts the endothelium of the blood vessels. So from uh, glycemic triad, a glycemic pentad was created. The glycemic pentad included not only the fasting PP and HB1C, but also glycemic variability and quality of life because quality of life was also considered important. But then a criticism was that glycemic pentad is person-centered. It is important to have this as an outcome, but it is not exactly the same as glucose numbers. It is measurable. It contributes to long-term outcomes, 
but it is not a glycemic parameter per se. So therefore, another pentad was prepared, which talked about HbA1c, fasting, postprandial. These are numbers that you have to bring down. And then glycemic variability and hypoglycemia. These are numbers that you have to minimize or to avoid. This rubric was justified, the glycemic pentad, because then uh, what it told us was that we should focus not only on efficacy of drugs to bring down glucose levels, but also on safety and tolerability to prevent hypoglycemia, to prevent glycemic variability. This was the glycemic pentad, but then the glycemic sixer was created also, glycemic hexad, and that is our topic for today. In glycemic sixer, there are three action-oriented or efficacy-oriented targets, HB1C, fasting, and PP. And also, there are three safety-oriented goals, hypoglycemia, nocturnal hypoglycemia, and glycemic variability. All these three have to be minimized. Why are hypoglycemia and nocturnal hypoglycemia considered separately? The, re the reason is that the pathophysiology is different. Also, the impact is different. During the daytime, if there is hypoglycemia, there will be increase in adrenergic tone and we may have tachyarrhythmias. At night, there is vagal predomin predominance and if there is an arrhythmia, it will be a bready arrhythmia. So, we should be aware of that. The symptoms are also different. The daytime symptoms are neuroglycopenic or adrenergic. The nighttime symptoms of hypoglycemia are different. Like, uh, for example, uh, bad dreams, nightmares, sweating, waking up at night, tossing and turning in bed, early morning headache. It would be interesting also, and I know that we have scholars uh, in uh, Tamil. Is there a difference between the Tamil word for bad dream and nightmare. That would be interesting to know. So we'll move on. This was the glycemic sixer. And uh, IPL is going on these days. And glycemic sixer is a very nice way of motivating our patients to do well in their diabetes care. And let me just use one slide before I go back to targets and thresholds. We'll talk about something called glycemic happiness. Now, uh, early on in practice, we realized that to be a successful diabetologist, of course, you have to get the numbers right, the good glucose numbers, but you also have to make sure that your patients are happy. Health is associated with happiness. Health is associated with harmony. You cannot have good health, either yourself or your patient. We cannot have good health until we are able to achieve harmony and happiness. So the Latin word, euthymia, and uh, I'm doing, studying Latin these days on Duolingo. I've completed, I think, uh, 189 days. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, euthymia refers to optimal or good mental state or mood. So we coined the term euthymic euglycemia. That is good mood and good glucose. But this becomes quite a mouthful, difficult to remember. So the easy word is glycemic happiness. How do you ensure glycemic happiness in your clinic? And I know that uh, uh, all of those who are listening, we are busy people in the OPD. That is why this late time, late night time, time has been chosen. We have been working with patients throughout the day. First of all, make yourself happy. Secondly, make your patient happy. Communicate with your patient in such a way that the patient becomes happy. Communicate in the same way with the caregivers at home as well. Make sure that they also remain happy. And whatever language you use, whatever words you use, they should be happy words. If we can achieve happiness in the OPD, if we can create happy communication, 90% of the battle is won in terms of achieving good glucose control and good outcomes. Of course, we have to teach our patient to cope with diabetes, to improve self-care, to improve their skills. And all this is part of communication. But now let's come back to our topic. The topic that Dr. Vijay had requested me to speak upon was triad to hexad. I changed it slightly, triad to hexad and beyond. So we spoke of the triad first, that is fasting PPHB1C. Then we moved on to pentad and to hexad, glycemic sixer, where we have three action-oriented targets, 
and three safety oriented targets. Do not forget that you have to minimize hypoglycemia, nocturnal hypoglycemia and glycemic variability. But then the criticism comes and that is genuine criticism. There are other things to diabetes than glucose and that is right. So just like we had a glycemic pentad, we created a therapeutic pentad. And when you look at your patients, this is what they want from us. They want good glucose control. They want good lipid control. And of course, the primary target is LDL, but there are other targets as well. Triglycerides, total cholesterol, non-LDL, HDL. They also want to be listened to. They want to be asked, how are they feeling? And that is part of the therapeutic pentad. PRO means person reported outcomes or patient reported outcomes. So the patient will tell us what his or her quality of life is. What is the level of diabetes distress? How are they coping with the disease? Do they have any anxiety or depression? Are they satisfied with us? That is the, for the patient to tell us. So glycemia, lipids, patient reported outcomes. And the fourth one is anthropometry. So remember again, Thiru Kuril telling us, measure the patient. So weight, waist circumference, body mass index, waist hip ratio, neck circumference. When I read Ayurveda, I am so astounded and surprised at the, at the level of uh, uh, detail they had gone into. Uh, in Ayurveda, they have got measures of up to 0 0.125 gram. 0 0.125 gram at a time when weighing machines did not exist. So they were able to take uh, one bean uh, which and, and they found out that eight beans together is roughly one gram. So they used that as a measure of making their medicines. Now we say nanograms and we say yoctagrams and quetagrams, there are so many things. And of course, uh, science is evolving. It continues to evolve. But even at that time, they were able to measure in a very delicate manner, all these things. The fifth aspect of the therapeutic pentad is blood pressure. So different aspects of vascular health are also there. Diastolic, systolic, BP variability, mean arterial pressure. And from this slide, what we see is that we have a therapeutic pentad. And for each of these angles, there is a pentuplet a small pentad, which tells us various things to look at. Now, before we begin to feel afraid about this slide, let me just continue with the therapeutic hexad now. In hexad, we add one more aspect. To glucose, lipids, patient reported outcomes, anthropometry or barometabolic outcomes, blood pressure. To these five, we add metabolic health, where we look at uh, the kidney, the liver, the gonads, hemoglobin, vitamin D, uric acid, the list is endless. All these have to be measured. All these have to be managed. Now, before we begin to feel afraid of these, do remember that all these things don't have to be done in all patients. Let us go back to our pyramid, the pyramid that we had. Try to build up your patient one step at a time. If your patient is concerned only about symptomatic relief, first of all, correct the symptoms to the best of your ability. And then take your patient one step up. Madam, uh, your symptoms will become fine. Don't worry. When you come back next week, there will be a smile on your face. Sir, please don't worry at all. I have given these medicines, these tablets. I'm very sure Madam will feel happy. And uh, after three or four days, you will get your morning tea, morning cup of coffee with a smile. That smile has been missing for a month now, I understand. But it will be back within three days. So we will take care of your symptoms. But let me take you one step ahead. Let us try to get good glucometabolic relief as well. So within 10, 15 days, the fasting and the postprandial will come down. And after six weeks or after 12 weeks, we'll do the HB1C. That will also reduce. Once that is done, you move ahead. Madam, I have used this medicine so that there is no risk of hypoglycemia. Please do not worry if your glucose doesn't fall in 10 days. If it doesn't normalize, it will increase the dose next time. Slow and steady wins the race. In some patients, this may be the total discussion. In another patient, this discussion has already been taken care of. So then you will move on to vascular metabolic benefit. Madam, let me add a statin so that your LDL can come down. 
let me add uh, maybe a uh, tablet for blood pressure so that the mean arterial pressure comes down. Then we move on to barometabolic and viscerometabolic health. So we need to fix up the vitamin D. There is albuminuria, microalbuminuria. So we need to give you fenrenone so that the uh, urine albumin excretion can come down. And that is the way to build up your OPD. Each patient separately, keep on focusing on the patient, the patient's concerns and complaints, address them, and then take the patient one step above, one step above, one step above. Do not try to jump three steps or six steps at the same time. The reason is that if we overshoot, we may think that we are very good doctors, but alone we cannot work. Remember verse 950 from Thiruguru, the quadruple of uh, Thiruvalluvar, that was patient, physician, prescription, that is drug or medicine, and caregivers. You can be only as good as the patient and as the caregivers. So we may think we are very good doctors, we have very good medicines to give, but then until we teach our patient and the caregivers to take care of themselves, our medicines are not going to work. So one step at a time is the best way forward. You can tell your patient also, sir, today we will teach you about hypoglycemia management. Tomorrow, maybe we will teach you about how to use the glucometer. So you can do one step at a time. All this brings us to something known as the glycemic spectrum. So we have spoken of so many things. Fasting, postprandial HB1C, they have to be controlled. Glycemic variability, hypoglycemia, they have to be minimized. But what do we have to maintain? We have to maintain glycemic durability. Whatever I do, it should be durable. And it can be durable only if the patient and I, we work together as a team. So if my relationship with the patient is durable, that is adherence, adherence to therapy, only then will the glucose control be durable. So we need to do the best possible to communicate with our patient, to keep the patient as equal partners in diabetes care. If we do that, then both of us will adhere to each other and we will have improved clinical outcomes. So this is what I wish to speak about today. We have spoken about so many uh, concepts today. We, we have spoken of uh, wisdom from our classic literature. We talked of glycemic triad, pentad, hexad or sixer. We discussed briefly euthymic euglycemia or glycemic happiness. We then moved on to therapeutic pentads and therapeutic hexads. Therapeutic means Apart from glucose, we will also focus on blood pressure, lipids, anthropometry, metabolic health, and person-reported outcomes. We've then tried to put this all together as a glycemic spectrum, speaking of the need to maintain durability and adherence. And what we began with, do you remember the pyramid? Maslow's pyramid. The basic needs are food, shelter, clothing. Similarly, the basic need for our patient is symptomatic relief. We should not miss that. Then you move on to glucose control, vascular health, barrow health, and visceral health. At that time, also, we spoke of the pyramid. And let's conclude with the pyramid again. All of us are in uh, practice, and we want to do the best possible for our community, for our fellow citizens. Whatever we do, we should be able to offer security, sufficiency, and safety to our patients. Sufficiency in terms of glucose control, safety in terms of avoiding hypoglycemia and glycemic variability, weight gain, and security in terms of macro and microvascular and uh, maybe visceral metabolic health. And all this should be based upon the foundation of sustainability. So this is the glycemic pyramid that we share with each other. The basis is sustainability, euglycemic durability utility, and we offer sufficiency, security, and safety. This is a pyramid temple from Chennai. And the pyramid is the most stable uh, architectural shape or model in the world. When you go to a temple, you are reminded of uh, safety and security. You also get sufficiency from there. 
And if this is sustainable, if it is done in a sustained manner, then automatically things improve for all of us, not only for our, not only for, uh, our patients, but for us as well. So with this, I'd like to uh, request everyone for their opinion, for comments, for criticism. We have just tried to share various uh, models of managing diabetes. We have not spoken about specific drugs today. But once we understand these models, everything falls into place itself. Now, suddenly we can go back to our OPDs tomorrow and I think we can become more efficient, more effective. I, for example, when I go through these slides, many times I remember the counseling mistakes, the counseling casualties that I do in OPD. I could have done a better job of counseling a particular patient if I had followed this model. I could have been safer. I could have avoided hypoglycemia if I had respected this model. So this is, uh, like I said, what I wanted to share. And I look forward to learning from all seniors and colleagues. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Sanjay. I think the RSD terminology chapter is very glad that you could talk to us today. Yours is the first online talk, as I Timurli told you. And I think you introduced us to a new concept of glycemic sixer and uh, glycemic happiness. We, these are terms which we don't realize when we treat people with diabetes. We just look at their blood sugar and HbA1c and say you are fine. But I think you have talked about a new concept of glycemic happiness, glycemic sixer. So, Sanmugavelu, you can start the ball rolling. My first question. You are muted. Sanmugavelu. Yes, sir. Actually, I am right now in uh, Hotel Savera. A lot of background noises. But anyway, uh, the presentation is really excellent. And uh, starting from triad, uh, next is tetrad, pentad, pentuplex, next is exad, exuplex, next is euthymia model, euthymia, uh, next is glycemic pyramid, security, safety, sufficiency, and the sustainability. So we should control fasting, postprandial A1C, minimize hypoglycemia, glycemic variability, and maintain. Uh, glycemic durability and uh, patients' adherence to therapy. These are all important key messages we need to pass to all the uh, 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 audience, uh, I mean, all the viewers and listeners of this program. This will definitely ensure achieving uh, good glycemic control while trying to implement this in our day-to-day -day practice. Dr. Sanjay, you think this glycemic happiness, uh, we can do it or some clinical psychologist is needed or educators can do it? Who can do this? Because we need to spend time and we don't have time. We fix up 30 patients, 40 patients. So who will do this concept? Sir, everybody will do. It is our responsibility, but it is also our right. Uh, I'll speak about two things. Uh, which have impacted my practice a lot. And uh, for both of them, actually, the inspiration was Pondicherry and Tamil Nadu. So I remember uh, coming back home to practice in Karnal in the year 2000 after having studied at Ames, New Delhi. The first few lectures that I would deliver, I would come back with a splitting headache. Evidence-based medicine is something different, but practicing in a small town, at that time, Karnal was two and a half lakhs population. Now also it is four and a half lakhs. It, it will not even figure on the Tamil Nadu map if you try to put a dot. So uh, sometimes the practice that we were doing was not as per the book, as per ADA ESD. But it was logical. It was sensible. Uh, just to give an example, supposing the American guideline says that GDM patients should be delivered at 39. That is fine. But the American people have not seen Haryana Roadways bus. And they have not seen Haryana roads. So if I tell the patient to come back for follow-up every week, 36, 37, 38, 39 weeks, chances are she is going to deliver in the Haryana Roadways bus only. The, the, uh, our uh, speed breakers and our potholes, they have not seen. So uh, on one of my visits to Pondicherry for a lecture, suddenly I learned this new English phrase, logical empiricism. Logical means whatever I'm doing in my practice is logical. Like now I'm saying, first you focus on symptoms, then you focus on glucometabolic and vasculometabolic relief. It is empirical because if I read the guideline, the guideline tells me you focus mm -hmm. on vascular benefit first. 
But if my patient has got villanopostitis, if my patient has already got polyuria, how can I start an SGLT2 inhibitor on day one? The least I should do is to be able to build trust with the patient. Madam, I know how to fix your symptoms. Let me fix them for you. Then we will talk about other things. So one phrase which helped me is logical empiricism. The other phrase was glycemic happiness. And then I realized, sir, that it is not something we are doing for the patient. We are doing for ourselves as well. So if I, what is it that I do in my OPD? Uh, no extra time is spent, but you just begin by greeting with a smile. All of us do that. You uh, greet the patient in, an, in a manner that is appropriate for age or gender. If the patient is from farming background, you ask them first, how is the crop growing? How is the harvest? How, is the water enough or not? Are you getting enough water for irrigation? Simple things like that. Thank the patient. Another issue with me was that I always used to get irritated. I think I have left a big city to come back to my hometown. So there should be a red carpet waiting for me. But there is no red carpet in practice. Even if you are Dr. Vijayvishwanathan, you have to work every day <laughs> to fill the pot. The moment you stop working, you are out of work. So uh, so I used to feel, why is nobody saying, thanking, uh, saying thank you to me? Then what is the best way to address that? You begin thanking patients. So now this is part and parcel of my OPD. Thank you, madam, for taking this one gram tablet. I know how difficult it is to take. Thank you, young man, for having brought your grandmother to the OPD. If you had not brought her, we would not be able to take care of her. I know that you, there are so many other things you can do. You can hang out with your friends. You can go and meet your girlfriend. But you have chosen to bring your grandmother. I thank you for that. Thank you, madam, for cooking good home and, uh, food at home. So you have learned uh, making dosa the Tamil way. But now, last time you learned how to make pesaratu, the Telugu way. So that added protein to your husband's diet. Now... See, your uh, uh, husband's edema has come down. Thank you so much. So I began saying thanking, uh, thank you to patients for whatever opportunity I could get. And now the end result is people say thank you to me. So that makes me happy. That makes them happy. So this glycemic happiness, everybody should do. And the, it is selfish also because the, we will gain the most. Then if you have happy patients around you, you also come back home happy in the evening. Now, sometimes you have to refer anybody with a suicidal tendency suicidal behavior, even suicidal thought, refer immediately to mental health professional. The rest of them, I think we can manage on our own. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. I think you introduced this concept of glycemic happiness, which is very true, very much true in our setting, and we don't realize it. <clears throat> we are so engrossed with disposing of our patients that we don't, we don't realize, realize this concept of the concept of uh, glycemic happiness. So you have two appreciations from Dr. J.C. Shekhar and Dr. Ranjit Pratap who posted in the Q&A box that your presentation was very good and they appreciated it. And for they thank you for quoting Tirukur, which is our bread and butter. So Dr. Balaji, you want to give the word of thanks? Any words from uh, Dr. Munli? Unmute, unmute. Uh, really, um, you have beautifully highlighted uh, that uh, Dr. Sanjay Kaldra, uh, really, uh, your um, uh, glycemic happiness, that is a new terminology. We have been listening to your talks for more than two to three years. So this terminology is um, very familiar for me. And your uh, concept of sitting with the patients, spending some time with them, addressing their concerns, and appreciating their uh, cooperation, everything. So it makes a lot of difference. And really, uh, at the end of the day, once the patient uh, achieves a glycemic happiness, the patient is happy, good quality of life. We are also happy. At the end, the end of the day, we have good outcomes. Uh, really, um, all those, your presentation is very simple, but powerful, very powerful. All the listeners of this uh, meet, Really, from tomorrow onwards, they will implement all the all your concepts. Really, we are very much happy about it. The first online meeting in this, in this academic year is really um, wonderful. Awesome presentation. Really, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You also have one appreciation one from... Uh, Vijay, sir, one minute. The thing is, he has taken a very beautiful quote from Tirukural. Yeah. Uh, we should really appreciate it. The thing is, even... Quote. 
we may not be in a position to explain clearly the contents of the kural what he has quoted really uh, we should appreciate dr sanjay kalrai uh, with reference to the confidence he has uh, on tirukural he normally makes a quote from tirukural that we should appreciate and really we are enjoying it you also have appreciation from dr gauri shankar narmaraj and also satish kumar who congratulate you for the excellent talk and thank you so point, uh, important point sir uh, one important point sir the question comes to the symptom the symptom has to be addressed first you have, your mind should not go to control the blood sugars that's one important very important thing when it comes to with uh, ulcer uh, severe uh, low back ache dysuria bundle pass is he is concerned only about that is not bothered about the pressure levels or hp and c is more bothered about symptoms so that should form the first part of that should address first then we should go to the other factors that's also made very clear this is very very important we only think in terms of hp and c and fasting and pp and other things there is much more patients more bothered about his symptoms and his problems which is which need more important address from our side thank you dr very taken up the very important point dr balaji is there to give the word of thanks or dr murli can yeah balaji is he is with me only now now he is proposing the word of thanks then so let's put the senior doctors and friends on behalf of tamil nadu chapter of rssti our sincere thanks to dr sanjay kalra sir for your for your you're muted you're muted you're muted sincere thanks to dr vijay vishnu sir secretary dr murli dhan sir and dr shanmugal sir and all the participants who made this day a great one and i sincerely thank for this great start in this academic year which has been taken initiated by dr vijayeshwaran sir on behalf of tamil nadu chapter of rssd so once again i thank sanjay kalra sir for your for sparing your valuable time making this day a great one and teaching us a lot of things thank you sir